Brats, we are back again with more good news on the PSVR 2 front. Details about the new controllers just got dropped today. This is not some sort of leak. This isn't something from a dev kit. This is directly from PlayStation themselves on the PlayStation blog. Let's talk about it. So today, Sony dropped news on the PlayStation blog saying next gen VR on PS5, the new controller. And you can see renderings and designs of those controllers right here. Futuristic kind of orb shaped look that fits all the way around your hands. Hideki Nishino says, Following the recent reveal of our next generation virtual reality system for PS5, I'm excited to unveil more details about the new controller that will play a critical role in providing gamers with the VR experience we're working to deliver. It will build upon the innovation we introduced with the DualSense wireless controller, which changed how games feel on PS5 by unlocking a new way to tap into the sense of touch. Now we're bringing that innovation to VR gaming. Now this is absolutely fantastic news because if you're like me and you've gotten to actually play around with a DualSense controller, this is the most next gen thing about the PS5 to me is the controller. The way it feels, the triggers, the haptics, this is gonna be fantastic in VR. First thing you'll notice with our next gen VR controller is the unique design which takes on an orb shape that allows you to hold the controller naturally while playing with a high degree of freedom. There are no constraints with how you're moving your hands, providing developers the ability to create unique gameplay experiences. It's well balanced and comfortable to hold in each of your hands. We applied learnings from testing users with a range of hand sizes as well as decades of insight from controllers across all PlayStation platforms. More great news because if they've tested this on a lot of people with a lot of different hands, that means hopefully we're going to get the best of both. And if you have an average size hand, you're probably going to get the best experience. But on either end of the spectrum, it looks like these are going to fit hands really well. So let's talk about the features. The adaptive triggers. Each VR controller left and right includes an adaptive trigger button that adds palpable tension when pressed, similar to what's found in the DualSense. There will be tension in the L2 or R2 buttons when you press them, such as when you're drawing your bow to fire an arrow. When you take that mechanic and apply it to VR, the experience is amplified to the next level. And I will agree. It is. It actually feels a little awkward to me when I'm playing with these and I'm sitting on my couch across the room from my TV and I'm feeling all this tension in my hand. It's one of those things that feels like if you first used a rumble pack back in like the N64 days, it felt awkward then, but now we've come to expect it in every game controller. And I fully believe that other gaming consoles in the future will take this principle of these triggers and apply it to theirs, and this will become a standard in the industry. Now seeing it in VR, this is gonna feel amazing. The new controller will have haptic feedback optimized for its form factor, making every sensation in the game world more impactful, textured, and nuanced. When you're traversing through rocky desert or trading blows in melee combat, you'll feel the difference, magnifying the extraordinary visual and audio experience that's so central to VR. This is huge because no other VR headset yet has nailed haptics. This is going to be a while before the PSVR 2 comes out, so that could change in the meantime. But so far, pretty much the most haptics you get in any controller is just vibrations. The haptics in the DualSense controller, when you're running an Astro's playroom and you're running across gravel and it switches to running across sand, running across asphalt, it feels so different. When you're pulling back a bow and you feel the tension in there, this will be amazing in VR. It will be so immersive and pull you in so much because it's really cool on the PS5. But again, you're sitting on your couch, you're across the room, you're feeling it in your controller, but it's not the same as when you're actually in there and you only see your virtual hands and you feel it. That is going to be fantastic. Finger touch detection. The controller can detect your fingers without pressing in the areas where you place your thumb, index, or middle fingers. This enables you to make more natural gestures with your hands during gameplay. Now, this is an important thing to read into here because this sounds like they're not doing the entire hand like the index controller. So that was something that we believed was coming from patents, from different rumors. This is only bringing up the thumb, the index, and the middle. So it's probably got capacitive sensors similar to what the Oculus Touch has to where it can tell if your finger is on or near your grip button, your trigger, or your buttons up top. So that's really exciting that we're gonna have more natural gestures. There's been no gesturing on the PSVR before, besides like pulling in your trigger barely or less. So that will be really cool to have that in game, but know that it looks like they've decided to drop every finger unless something changes here, because it's only saying thumb, index, or middle finger. So that's an important detail to bring out. Tracking. The VR controller is tracked by the new VR headset through a tracking ring across the bottom of the controller. So now we're talking about inside out tracking, which is what we were all expecting, especially when it's only a one cable, one wire setup. You just plug it in and play. Inside out tracking can be really good, as we've seen on the Rift S, the Quest 2. Some, some do it better than others, but it's definitely the way the industry is heading towards, except for the pro level, intense, competitive gamers that are going to use things like the Valve Index controllers only. It's much more convenient than anything else. We should have still really good tracking, but it probably still won't quite be up to the level of like an index or a Vive. 
hopefully by then the technology that Sony comes out with will be really good for. But one really important detail here they're bringing up, this tracking ring is what's going to track it. And the way this is designed, this is gonna fit all the way around your wrist, kind of like a bracelet. That means there's never gonna be a chance to really block the entire tracking ring from the headset unless you're actually reaching behind your back or something. So like when you're playing on a Rift, it's pretty easy with this controller to get it turned to an awkward angle away from your headset, but you get it turned to where barely any of the lights are showing. It's not that hard to do. I mean, this angle that you'd be seeing this from, this would just be a down swing and Beat Saber. And you'd be looking at this side of the controller with your hand in the way. This is pretty easy to get blocked and create occlusion. Occlusion is when the sensors can no longer see the tracking lights and the headset has to guess where the controller is, what it's doing. It's not very noticeable, but it does happen on the Rift S and it does cause problems sometimes. So the fact that this is gonna be all the way around your wrist means your hand's really never gonna be able to get in the way no matter what you're doing, unless you're doing some sort of really awkward, maybe salt bay motion or something to where you're somehow your whole upper arm is blocking the controller wherever it's at it's going to be really hard for it to lose sight of these so that is amazing hopefully the psvr headset will have enough cameras on it ideally somewhere in the range of five uh to be able to see that no matter where you're reaching because that is a feature that could be really well used really well implemented to make sure that you always stay immersed in the game Action buttons slash analog sticks. The left controller contains one analog stick, the triangle and square buttons, a grip button, which is L1, trigger button is L2. The right controller is gonna have your other buttons. So it's gonna have the cross and circle, the R1 grip button, R2 trigger, and your options button. So if you look at a PlayStation controller, basically we're gonna get everything this has on it except the D-pad and the touchpad. Now, the touchpad isn't hardly ever used anyways. The D-pad a lot of times is used, I. I see in games for either inventory management, optional buttons, some games don't even use it. So when you're in VR, if you're doing inventory management, hopefully they're gonna be coming up with a way in game that feels more real, like The Walking Dead did where you pull out your backpack, you take something out. You don't really want buttons for inventory management if you're going for immersion. This is fantastic news, but it it's completely expected. I don't. I hope that no one thought they would make a PSVR 2 without analog sticks after the PSVR 1 didn't have them and that was such an issue for all of us for the PSVR. I fully expect this. If it's a surprise to you, happy day. <laughs> like, it's awesome we're getting it, but this was expected. I'm really happy about that. I'm glad to see that we're gonna have pretty much the full range of everything the controller does, because you're gonna have both your analog sticks on there. I'm sure they'll be pressable. You're gonna have your adaptive triggers, your grip buttons, and then you can have all four of your buttons and your two options and share buttons. So, gonna have pretty much the entire functionality of the DualSense controller built into two separate controllers, which is fantastic. So they finish up here saying the teams have collaborated to build our new VR controller from the ground up with the goal of making a huge leap from current gen VR gaming. We're thrilled with the controller we developed, but what matters now is how game creators will take advantage of its features to design the next generation of VR experiences. Prototypes of our new VR controller will be in the hands of the development community soon, and we can't wait to see what ideas they come up with and how the controller helps bring their imagination to life. There's still much more to share about the next generation of VR on PS5. On behalf of all of us, I want to thank you for taking this journey with us. So at this point, I'm going to pass the questions off to you. What do you think about this? Do you like the look of the controllers? Do you think that the design of them is going to feel really natural? I think there's going to be a good balance with having that ring around your hands, but I am worried that having anything bigger than your hands are means you're going to hit them together. You're going to hit them into the headset. We found that with like the Rift S controllers and stuff, <laughs> any extra thing that reaches out from your hand, it's always possible to hit it and possibly you're going to damage it. So I'm hoping they make these extremely durable. What do you think about the fact that we're getting the analog sticks we've been waiting so many years for? <laughs> like I said, I thought it was expected and I never believed they wouldn't have them. So I'm glad. Uh, are you disappointed that it looks like we're not gonna get every single finger tracked and it's just gonna be your main three fingers like the Quest 2 or the Rift does now? What do you think about haptic feedback? I think that is definitely one of the most revolutionary things that and the triggers about these controllers, but will that still hold up? when the PSVR 2 comes out. They've told us it's definitely not coming out in 2021. So that means it's gonna be probably at least a year from now. If a Quest 3 comes out, if another competitor enters the market, if Vive ever does something good again, will the PSVR 2 still seem like this huge leap as they call it? Or will it possibly start to fall into ambiguity? Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinion. I want to say thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Well, we got some exciting news. At least we know something. <laughs> I can't wait for PSVR 2 personally. I love my PSVR. I still play with it. But let me know what you think, and I will see you in another reality. I want to say the biggest thank you to those of you who have become channel members and any of you who have ever been patrons of ours. 